Hi everyone, it's me, Melissa Bevins, again with the Friendly Crochet Creations. I am on a roll this week with videos, and I hope to get those one up to you soon. And I want to say happy late St. Patrick's Day. I'm sorry I haven't been around lately, but... Hmm. I want to talk about it. Um, I did put that in one of my other videos that I will probably um, put up before this one. And, um, I'm not real happy with the mail service right now because my boxes, everything got tore up except for one. And that was the one that was actually in the mailbox. So, I've already filmed the, um, Darn Good Yarn unboxings. And, I haven't done the crochet surprise yet. I got it yesterday. And, I will probably do that sometime today. And, then I'll get it to you on the 5th of April. Or, 6th or 7th or something. Um, I did upload one already and send it to you. Um, I have another one to upload real soon, but I have to wait for my battery to um, charge on my phone to get y'all anything else. I'm really having trouble with that right now. And what else? I have a lot of projects I want to show to you. And also I want to wish you a happy National Crochet Month. And it's also something else, too. I can't remember what it was. But um, the Underground Crafter had something this month. Um, and I didn't look into it till a couple of days ago. Um, where they're doing something. They're having a pattern release every day of the month to celebrate National Crochet Month. And the um, Huga Home Crochet Along or the Huga Home Cow is already finished. She picked the winner, like, the next day after the deadline. And, no, I did not win that one this time. So we'll see about next time. And they also have a scarf of the month thing over there. So if you go to HTTPS, um, colon, what is that? Backslash, backslash, um, undergroundcrafter.com, you can find her list of the things that they're doing this year and that they have done in the past. Um, None of, the, none of the future ones have been posted, but the ones that they're working on now and the ones that they have worked on are up. And you can get a list of that for the make-alongs. Um, she's also doing sewing, sewing alongs and knitting alongs also. So you can check all that out over there. And I will link all that down below. And besides her and all of that, which I'll show you in a little bit, the um, crochet crowd just came out with um, a crochet along, make along this week. And I think it has five sessions. And on the first one, we are making 22 of these squares here. Sliding this knot down here. There we go. Now you can see that. All right, okay, 22 of those, and I just finished mine today. It took me, I've been working on these for three days. Okay, okay. I put those in my basket with this. I think he's using Karen um, one pounders and Karen jumbos, but I wanted to do the Karen Simply Soft. But on this one, the cream color, I'm using the color scheme two. I wanted to do three because I have a lot of yellows, but I didn't have the others, the other colors. So I'm doing this one. And this is Soft Creations. And the color is off white. This is an older, older skein I got somewhere. But I do have, you know, the Simply Soft. This one is regular white. This is what they use. Okay, it's Simply Soft. It's backwards, I know. But anyway. And the one I'm using, um, the second color way of whatever we're making is a cook blanket. Colors are not great and grand. But there's that. And then it has um you're supposed to use two other colors and I don't know if I'm gonna substitute colors or what later on but we'll do that. Okay. So here's the pillowcase that we did first from Marisa Garris, the um, underground crafter, the twin textures pillow. It's actually a case. 
And I used a Bernat Velvet instead of the Huga. And I did buy two Hugas the other day. I sold that project that I was telling you about. And um, I got some money for it. Even the rest of it for gas. But I did buy a couple of skeins of yarn. And this one is the Popcorn Hello. Also Bernat Velvet. Same two colors. Um, what was May? I think this to go home wall hanging and I'm going to insert a video of this right now well here it is it's all finished and complete finally and this is the Hugo wall hanging it was like the third thing in the Huga Home crochet along with Marie Segaris and, and all the other ones. And I finally got it on the stick and the handle on there and it's hanging in the hallway for now. An and um, I'm going to take it down here in a little bit and put my my picture back up there. But um, this is where I usually do some of my videos, my yarn reviews and things. Uh, in the first videos, excuse me, um, I did not put the fringe on there, and I didn't put any tassels, but you can see the popcorn stitches, or the diagonal puffs on there, that they called for, and I switched all the colors. Now, these were supposed to be, um, white and cream through here, I think this is supposed to be cream and these white or vice versa, these could have been cream and not white. It was just like regular, um, they looked about the same. You could just barely tell the difference. But, um, I used a different color scheme. And the handle was a different color too, but I went ahead and used the least color that I used on there. So there's this, and I'm gonna try to insert this in, in a video. I've got another blanket done, and um, hopefully I'll talk about that real soon. Um, I'm not sure if I'll put, hopefully I'll put this in the middle somewhere instead of at the end or the beginning, but um, this is it. I've been trying to get this done for a month, and I finally got it, and there it is, and I'm about ready to start the new project. Um, that came out on Monday. This is Friday, and the new one comes out on Monday. It's a really big one. It's a pooling blanket, and I'm going to do it a little bit different, but it's still going to look, um, like it's been pulled, so. Let's see. I don't know what the last project is. I hope it's not a big one. Uh, we had two small ones back to back and now two big ones and I don't know what's coming up next. So uh, we'll see and hopefully I'll get these all uploaded and put up for the, the giveaway thing and I was hoping to get them all up sooner but I've been having some problems. But this is once again is the Huga wall hanging or the Huga home wall hanging. And I'll have that linked down below for you. Hers is really, really pretty. It's got um, the browns and tans and, like I said, the cream and white. It's really, really nice with the fringe and the and the tassels on there. But I think I kind of like it eh, a little plain like this. So there's a good picture of that. And stay tuned for more. Thank you. Bye, for now. <laughs> See you in a minute. Okay, now that you're back, that um, you've seen that video that I post, I will show you the rest of these. I'm trying to do them in order. Okay, I'm here. Everything will take Oh, where's my note? Oh, here it is. This page. Yes, that was a Twin Textures Pillow by Underground, Underground Crafter, the Huga Popcorn Pillow by the Purple Poncho, um, the Huga Wall Hanging by Divine Debris, um, number four is a Dreamy Diamonds 
throw by five little monsters. Let me get that for you. It's at the bottom of this basket. basket. This is the Dreamy Diamonds throw. This one I use the red heart saw, just like the wall hanging. These are different. And this seafoam color here is is the one that I, I gave away in the um in the giveaway at my 100 subscribers video. Don't know if I want to do one for 200 yet. I'm still thinking about that. Now, Mr. Cuddles is by Jesse at Home. But since I did pinks, I went ahead and um, called mine Miss Cuddles. Okay. These four colors here. Here's the top. That was the last section. It has three pinks. Okay. And this one has two pinks and a purple. See how that changes? And then there's a different combination down here. Two pinks and a purple. And then here's this one with two pinks and a purple. You see? I don't have the dark pink on the on the bottom. I didn't start with it. But there's the medium and the light. And there's the bubble gum, which is the dark one. There's the lavender. And this section didn't have it. I'll show you one on one section at a time so you can see how the colors change. Okay. And there's this one. So anyways, I used light pink, pink, bubblegum, and lavender on this one. Pull that back up. Put it back in this basket. This is Miss Cuddles. Okay. The next one was the Huga Neck Roll Bolster Pillow. And all I did was this one. You know, I used the same colors. I used the bubble gum and the lavender in this one. But I did not put a pillow in here. Um, I did what I did when I made a bolster pillow on my own when my son was still in the oven, I guess. <laughs> he was still um, being developed inside and Oh, maybe I did it right after. I can't remember, but I was making a blanket and I wanted some pillows to go with it. And I did a um a bolster pillow, but I did it where you tie the ends right there, look like one of those candy wrappers or something. And um, I just stuffed it, just like this one. I stuffed it, and I will wish I had that over here to show you, but it's empty right now. And I did do the opening where you can open and close it to take that out and put a pillow in there and switch it out or you know. You can change the covers if you want, you know, make more bolster pillow covers and change them out. Um, and then wash the covers by themselves. And then we did the Huga Ombre Baskets. There's two sizes. There's the large one. Doesn't want to stand up. There we go. But I'm sure it will after there's something inside of it. Which reminds me. This would be a good time to show you what I got. Hoga Home. The Hoga means comfy and cozy. I read Heart. This one is color Pearl. I got them at a cheaper price at um, Walmart yesterday than, or two days ago, than I would have got it at work. Unless I used a coupon, but it was already on sale, so. This is the Huga Red Heart um, powder. There you go, there's the color. A little better. I can't really see around my stuff. There's those two. Let's see if I can show this to you better. There we go. That's better. Okay, there's that one. And here's the first one. I mean, the smaller one. Is this the second one? Or I guess it's the first one on the pattern. Same colors. White, uh, medium pink, or just pink, bubblegum, and lavender. The other one was lavender, bubblegum, pink, and white. Okay. Here's those. It was seven. 
Um, number eight is the cozy hook and throw but Umbaka design. Hers was totally white, but I did the four, uh, five colors, and I even did the five colors on the border. I like the border, it's really nice. There's white, the light pink, the pink, bubblegum, and lavender. Although it looks blue, it is lavender, I promise. Oh yeah, I didn't use five on the border. Yes, I did. You go around one time with single crochets, and then you do the other four colors. The other four rounds. Trying to show that to you. Okay, and then there's some of the other colors. that and then we have this one by Marley Bird is the Pixie Dusk Granny Stitch Planned Color Pulling Blanket and she calls for like 20 on balls of 21 balls of five ounces of a certain um variegated yarns and then and then um take one or two each of Three colors. Four colors. One, two, three. Three colors for the border. Three of the four colors that's in that um, color scheme. But what I did, I went ahead and used my my Lion Brand um, Pound of Love baby yarn again. All the colors I used. Um, I used white. I used a light pink. I used bubble gum and lavender. The only color I didn't use that I have was the medium pink. Okay, you can kind of see how that works up. Some triangles are solid, some are not. And this is how the pulling is supposed to work when you use the variegated yarns. The stripes and the actual pulling yarns by Red Heart. Okay, there's that. I started using purple for the border in the middle. And then I used the pink. What she did though was she used the lights on the outside, um, the dark right here, kind of in the middle, and then the very center was the white, or the off white, whatever color she used. Um, it was the very light one, but I kind of did it opposite. Um, I did the white or the lightest one around the center, and then the light ones on the outside of the border, and then the darker two colors in the middle. Of course, she only used three colors, I used four. Okay. It's really cool how that does. It was really neat trying to um, change the colors, but it was nerve wracking too. And of course, you know the strands get tangled if you don't, if you're not careful and stuff. And that was tedious to not get all that tangled. But if you do it the way she said to do it with the with the one skin yarn, you shouldn't get your stuff all tangled like I did but if you use the four different colors you know one at a time and then work it like she says like she tells you how it's supposed to work because you're supposed to do like one color for so many stitches like I did 16 and she did 22 um so I did one color for 16 I did another for 16 and then on the next row I did 16 and 16 and since the second row had one more um granny stitch um uh, section there then you use that color the next color or the first color that you use so it changes the color so anyway, on the second row where did you go from there you do Every many you started with 16 or 20, you just keep that number going and it should work out just fine if you keep and you keep the keep them in order and they'll just adjust themselves. And so this one, which brings us to the last one. And um, again though that, that again was by Marley Bird. And um this one is Moogly, the cozy couch and bedside organizer caddy. Of course, 
Um, she used red heart, you know, Marie Segaris used a different yarn and even not Moogly used um this one too. She used the um the regular Huga yarn, but there was one more I think that didn't use Huga, but I can't remember which one that was. Anyways, I think she used Huga on this one, but I did not. I went back to my Red Heart Soft. And so there's the dark red. And there's the gray. And then here are the pockets. And you can put things in pockets. Take your remote control. I got this where you put your glasses on there on the case. And then you, know, you can put a book or your iPad or something in here in that pocket. And there's the stripes. And you put these here and you go around. It was a lot of fun doing this, and some some of it I did get backed up on, but it was like during the um the smaller um sections, and I actually had time for to catch back up with that later. But um, and even I got behind on some of the blankets, but I caught up really really fast, and I didn't really have time to upload it until the very last minute. So that's what I did. I uploaded it the very last minute, and um. Oh, I just didn't win it this time, but it's all right. There's always next time, right? I did, I won the first two that I entered. And then, um, I want to show you this right here that I've already showed to you. Another video. And it's done. Well, almost done. Kind of like a 2011 and FO. So this is the Kingman shawl here that I was working on in my last podcast. And I've already uploaded this on the Lion Brand. Um, shawl and a cake video. So, um, it's a free, it's a free pattern on Lime Brand, and I can link that below, or just list it down below, and I printed it off. This is the Kingman shawl. This is the picture that they show with her wearing it. Of course, it's a different, it's different colors there. I'm going to also give you that, and then the pattern, and then the Of course, you can use shawl and a ball with that, but I'm not sure sure if it'll take one ball or two. But I did take one cake, the Cheddar Bora shawl. I like this one a lot. I want to try that one. And the Barbizon shawl takes three. It takes two of one and then one of another one. It takes two of the... um. Lotus Blossom and then another cake of something else. I can't remember what this one is. I want to open this up to look at it. This one also gives you the chart for the um, Barbizon shawl. I like this one, but as I was trying to show you all before, um, it gives you like, you do a solid row here. I need to do a play crochet for three. Okay, but when I got down here, for some reason, I have four. I did have six, and I took two out. And so, um, when I got down to the end, I'm like, you know, I don't know if I like it just to be like a border, just a regular border. I think I want to add single crochets to that, too. And so, this is how far I got. I didn't take that one row out, so... I guess if I want to do the single crochets, I can go back and take that out, but I'm going to have a lot left over. And if I just take the single crochets, I'm going to have a lot left over. So I'm going to have a lot left over if I fix it and redo it, or if I just take the singles out, I'm going to, you know, have a lot left over. Or I might just do what I do with my hat and just leave it, you know, just do the ends and hide it. Get it some help, but um, I'm not sure what I want to do. On that, if I think I have time to later, I'll fix it. Um, but I do like how the colors worked out. I just don't like these colors here. I like the other colors. And it stripes very well, as you can see. Hopefully, you can see that. The colors will wash out. It's much prettier than what it's showing up here. My lining is horrible in this room. I wish I could turn this around and it might be a lot better. I can't do that. I did turn off the other light already. So how about 
um, I have this baggie here. It's called the um, Aviator Bag, um, Amelia Earhart uh, Aviator Bag. I either got this from Crochet World or Crochet Today. I can't remember, but I will find that hopefully this year and show it to you. It's the same on both sides. Of course, hers is a different color, but I wanted to use zebra because it reminds me of like when those tigers or white tigers. I love white tigers. Um, I don't know when they changed it to black and white, but our the football uniforms are red and white with gray and black. So I mean, it just makes sense, I think. And I love the the tigers, um, the white tigers with the black stripes, and then the solid white tigers. I didn't know for a long time we had solid black tigers in the world, but I do like the black and white striped tigers. So every time I see zebra print, I think of tigers. So I have this. I don't know if y'all remember this from Christmas, but um, Freeze Babies Frolic, um, Freeze Baby Frolic Fibers, Fiber Frolic, Freeze Baby Fiber Frolic, I think it's what it is. She was doing um, I, something with um, for a cow, like a crochet along with teapots. She cozies where you, I think she wanted you to post what you did somewhere or something. I don't know, I have to look into it. So y'all can look into it too. So I had already started this one. I had showed you this one before. Like I had done this one and I was working on the second panel and I went ahead and did this correctly. But of course the rest of it's not good. It's supposed to be like this one, but I don't want to take it all apart and redo it. So I thought, you know, I'll just do it right for a little while. And so when I started this panel here, I did it right. This one's right. And it's not finished. Yeah, there's a top. It's not done. I need a couple more rows. So it has the, the line here, like it's supposed to. And then I have to make the, the next one. I didn't want to, to post this. I want to show her until, you know, because I already started it. As, it was a whip. So I wanted to do a new one. And I have plenty of yarn left over. Okay. And I already did, since I showed you last, and since she posted that, this is the drawstring for one of them. These are the leaves for the holly berry. And this is the berry, although it's not circled yet, but that's gone. Yeah, I just sew that up right there. You put it on the top of the tea cozy. This one's knitted, this one's crocheted. And so, like I said, I have a lot of yarn left over, so I'm thinking it's going to be able to make another panel. Another complete total panel, another drawstring, another holly and berries. So do have green there. I have the little green. And I have a lot of the red, red and white, which is my home colors of it. So I'll make another set of those. Another drawstring. Okay. I don't know if I have enough for a third one, but you know, if I have a third one, you know, I could sell to give one away or give two away or something. Hopefully I can make some money off of that. So I have been crocheting the storm and I want to show you something that I've been trying to show you and I keep forgetting and it's been in different stages. And this is the, from um, the crochet surprise in December that I got. I made the hat, the Selchi hat. And I need to take in my hands, of course. Okay. So I did this one. With the other video. Now the only thing I need to do is to finish the top somehow. Now they say to to sew that together. But I'm thinking, you know, I could use it as a bun hat. Or I can use it, put a pom-pom on there. Because look at all this yarn I have left over. I have a lot of yarn left over from Karen Simply Soft. And it's country blue. Okay. I have all this left over. I'm carrying some soft. Where's the way the title is? Karen. Karen simply soft. Okay. I have all of that left over. So I'm like, you know, I don't know if I can make another hat with that or not. But you know, 
my tea that was supposed to go in. Uh oh. I'll put it somewhere like this. Okay. So this is the hat. It's called, is it called a slouchy hat? Oh, the Win slouchy hat. W Y N N slouch hat. Okay. So I made that. And these are my notes that I did. I brought out all the, the numbers of the rows and I marked them all. Even on the bottom there, because as I did them. I had to keep track because there was 80, 80 rounds on this hat. And that's including, not including the, the brim. Let me see, does that include the brim or not? Is the brim separate? I think the brim was separate. No, it was it was together. It was all in one piece because what you do is you go from bottom to top and back to down to top to bottom. We did it this way. So yeah, we made the brim as we went and the top as we went. And I've never done the top like it said to do with this one. Um, really, really interesting. Um, I really had to concentrate on this one. It is not easy. Not an easy pattern. It's more like I think it's intermediate, but I don't know if it says forget. I think it's intermediate. At least. There's a new stitch in here I didn't even know. I've never seen a yo slip stitch or yarn over slip stitch. I've never never heard of that before. So that was a new one for me. Um that was kind of difficult to do. And then yesterday I got this one out, so I wanted to finish that one, but I think I'm going to wait on finishing the top because I need to think about that in a minute. And then I said, you know, I'm going to do these in order, so I'm going to do January's next, right? And I did. I did these yesterday. I'm not going sitting, of course. And they fit perfect and they look really, really cute on me. I don't know if I can show these to you. The waffle stitch. That's the first time I've ever done the waffle stitch. Um. The first one I've seen was Jada's and Stitches, and she did it hers. Um, it was one, two, and one. These are one, one, and one. See that? Looks really, really cute. Do, 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 do. I love these things. It's a little long. I guess I should have done mine. One, two, shorter, but okay. Well, this anyways, the front works, but this is just a little bit big. I might have could have done one less right there. Same thing, this one. Okay. A little point go right there, but it's alright. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So anyway, I'm trying to show you the inside, but it's alright. They're really cute. On oh, anyways. Oh. Keep those in order. Come back in the box and I have this left over. This is the wool. This is the alpaca. They're about the same size. The alpaca is a little bit less. So you can look right here. Then the wool. These are in here. I do have a few in here. Little stitch boots. That is what they call them, right? Waffle boots. Waffle boots. So I like that one. <sighs> I'm so sad though because I never got February's. But I did get March's, like I said earlier. And hopefully I'll get that today. today. I wanted to do it yesterday. I was doing some things like the waffle boots yesterday. And so I decided not to do those. Um. <clears throat> I think that's all for now. I wish I could show you my crochet surprise box. And, um, I haven't done anything with my knit crate yet. You know, the yellow yarn that I got, the hemp yarn. I have not done anything with that yet. And I haven't done anything with my darn good yarn boxes yet, but I hope to do that soon. Maybe after I get some other things caught up and I want to do the crochet surprise box that we got. And I'll show you <coughs> the finished project on that one. So hopefully I'll do like two videos. Like I'll show you the box, even though it's torn up, splendor and splendor and everything. 
Oh, I can't believe they did. My dogs did that. They ne they never, never, never touch my stuff, right? And sometimes I'm here when it comes in, and sometimes I'm not. And this week, I don't, I'm not sure what's going on with that. But they never touch my stuff, and they did this time. And anyways, I'll show you that. And then, yeah, I'll make that one. I'll show, I'll do the unboxing, and then I'll film. If if I do the project soon, I will um, do the video on that and post it and combine those together and then post everything. So, man, I'm going to really wish I was editing right now, but I don't know how to do that yet. But I do have a book that I picked up at the library, I believe. I paid a quarter for this one. It's um John Hedgecoe's Complete video course a step-by-step self-instruction guide to making great videos oh they also have a photography course too so i got this book here um back here it says um the bullets on here it says planning a video shots sequences composition and framing telling a story creating atmosphere camera techniques and editing so i'm pretty sure that's going to be really interesting this way these bullets right here um, yeah, I'm not sure what year this is. I mean, let's look at the copyright real quick. I really haven't really looked at this very much, but it's like something I wanted. 1989. So it's right on my alley, except it's not really up to date, but it is 1989. It'll get me started on editing and stuff and... That. I'm sure it has some basics and some of it's probably still the same. And it was only a quarter at the library, so. <sighs> well, I guess that's all, folks. And the, I showed you the 10 projects from the Marie Calendar's Google Home Crochet Along. I posted my stuff on the Cal Crochet Along and on the Underground Crafter Facebook pages. And I posted it on my Facebook page for the friendly crochet creations and on my regular page and also on my Twitter and my um what you call it? Instagram because you can do like your regular regular Facebook page and Twitter at the same time you do Instagram and that's what I did and then I went back and did the friendly crochet creations one and then I did the Marie Segaris one no the underground capture one and the Cal Central crochet one so i did all of those and tagged them and now i'm going to give you all the links for all those 10 projects on here and y'all go check out um what she's what they're doing for march if you want and that's pretty interesting there's 31 but on that one for the um, national crochet month some of them are just 25 percent off the patterns and some patterns are free on that one um so yeah, some of them you do have to pay something, and after the 31st, you have to pay the whole price for the paid for patterns. I guess not everybody wants to give away their patterns for free for that one, but um, usually on the other ones, like for the giveaways and stuff, they're all usually free. But if you want to buy the pattern off Ravelry, they're usually a couple of dollars, like two fifty or something per pattern. And then if you want to go to their website, you can get them for free. But like I said, on the National Crochet Month one. Some of them you do have to pay for, no matter what. Sorry, thing right there. And then the scarf of the month, I'm not sure if those are all free or not, but I know the ones that I saw already were free, like the first one for January. Um, I've been busy, like I said, um, February, March, I don't know exactly yet. But um, <clears throat> my couch is almost ready for me to sit on. I'm so excited. Woohoo! Just got to finish getting the rest of the stuff off there and... Maybe clean it up a little bit, put a cover on it, and then I can sit there and crochet with you guys and relax, prop my feet up. <laughs> oh yeah, I've got to clean that off too. Huh. Oh, a lot of work to do. And then I can show you when I get on the couch, you know, hopefully in a week or two, I can show you what what I'm talking about, you know. So um, I'm running out of places to put stuff in the living room. But, um, and my craft table, you know, I, I don't know if I told you, I did clean it off at one point, but like, 
that day or the next day, I was going through some stuff and I put all more stuff on top of it. So <clears throat> I'm going to have to go through that again too. Whether I have a yard sale or an online sale or give it away or put it away somewhere else or, you know, whatever I do with it, I need to do something. I need to figure it out. I need to make a decision because um, this is ridiculous the way the house looks right now. But, um, anyways, um, it is Thursday and I hope everybody has a great weekend and the rest of your, um, month this, um, March and happy National Crochet Month and happy late St. Patrick's Day. Um, I think that's all for now. I did not do any sewing classes. I did not do any crochet classes this month, but hopefully I will do again next month and my sewing instructor had surgery on her shoulders so she's gonna take off at least a month but you know she she wants to come back in a month and not two or three months or on down the line so we'll see we'll see how that works out hopefully we'll um, have class next month and um i don't know if i'll have to go to another store if she doesn't because i do really want to do those classes but um I will catch you real soon and I'll have this posted and the other one I did post it and get the other one recorded very soon within the next couple of days you should have these these two that I just recorded up and you have one already to watch and I do apologize again for being late I, I don't know my guy he's he's like I'll help you I want to help you and he never does so I don't know he likes me to do stuff for him, and he don't want to do anything for me. That doesn't make any sense. That's not fair. No. So, um, and he's a very intelligent guy, so I don't know what he thinks he's doing, um, trying to get away with stuff like that. So, we'll have to, I'll have to figure it all out, see what I do. There's a couple things, you know, I've talked with him and argued with him, and this kids just go around and around. We did the same thing the time before, before he busted up with me for a couple months, you know, so... I'm like, uh, I know it could work out, but right now it's not going to. So, and I haven't talked to him in a couple of days, and um, since he ran out of here the other day, um, Tuesday morning, um, yeah, he didn't want to talk. He was mad, no hugs, no nothing, and then. Um, Also, there was something else. He did leave something behind over here. I'm not sure if he wants it. I'm sure he's lost without it because it looks like he, he uses it all the time. But um, it's sad that he's he's gone, you know, that he was here and I couldn't do anything. And now he's gone and I can't, you know, I can do that. So, I mean, I think he needs to be more honest if he's going to say he's a Christian. And I think he has a lot of things to work on in that, in that point. Because he's not um, proving to me that he really wanted to be a Christian. He's doing it for other reasons, I think. So, I know he was raised in the church, at least for part of his life. And then his friend that just moved in the town, he is an ordained minister. So, I know he's spending some time with him. But I know he's spending time with other people, too, that probably he shouldn't be running around with. So. And I think his his best friend has some problems too, but well, I don't know a lot, you know. So a lot. I know some of it, but not all of it. Um, so I won't get into any of that. Hopefully they'll they'll all get the help they need soon. And if, I'm trying not to make problems like rock the boat or anything right now, because I know if I see something or turn him in for something, he's gonna know it, you know. But if somebody else was to do it, maybe he would know, maybe he wouldn't. You know, we've spent a lot of time together, so we know each other pretty good. But anyways, that's it. And, I mean, I do have to text him something, and I'm going to text him a scripture probably sometime this week or this weekend. So, um, and he's probably going to have his daughter this weekend. He didn't have her last weekend, and he had her the weekend before, which has become the trend, you know, right now. It's like every other weekend, and I'm proud of him for not taking her every weekend and Letting her spend time with her mom, you know, every other weekend. That's that's really great, great of him to do. And um, 
anyways, we'll see you next time. And hopefully I can do my goal of getting more videos up and doing at least one a week. Like, you know, one of each thing that I do. Um, of course, the unboxings, that, that's only a once a month thing. You know, you forget two boxes, there's going to be two, right? I want to do a yarn review every week. And I want to do my podcast episodes. Or like I put video episodes every week. So I want to get at least those two every week to you. And if there's anything else that I want to show you during the week, then that would be a third video every week. So I probably won't do one every day. I'm just not not into all that. I have too much things to do around here. But after, 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 after everything gets said and done, and maybe even after my kids come back, they can help me and we can do one every day or one every, you know, four times a week or five times a week or something, you know, because I need some time off too. So, um. There we have it. We have one already uploaded. I have one recorded and for this one I need to join it, the three videos, and get it up to you soon. And my phone is charging, so y'all have a good weekend and happy late National Crochet Month as I said and happy late St. Patrick's Day. And if you want to go check out Underground Crafter, I highly suggest you do that. Um just be careful with some of the some of the patterns because they were done so fast and uploaded so fast that some of them have errors. So um, some of them are obvious, some are not. So just be careful, okay? And I'll catch you next time. Bye.